Clay Shaw's name or figured out who Clay Shaw was. Well, before he'd gotten to Clay Shaw, before he had any inkling of who Clay Shaw was, he got a visit from a wealthy businessman named John King. Now, John King has been written about, and this has been written about in books about Garrison by liberals who like what Garrison did. And they say, oh, John King, who was connected to Richard Nixon and connected to the Republican Party, came to visit Jim Garrison and tried to frustrate his investigation. That's a fact. King came down there and said, Mr. Garrison, you're very close. And there's a lot of people who would prefer that you would stop this investigation. We would appreciate it if you would. Please, Mr. Garrison. He offered him a judgeship. Jim Garrison said, see the door. Now, like I say, all our liberal friends who are so determined to find out who killed John F. Kennedy, so determined that they don't want to look at anything I have to say, um, they keep saying John King was this Republican conservative. He probably was. Maybe he was a Republican. Maybe he did know Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon knew a lot of people. But you know what's even more significant? Here's John King. He's an American. You know who John King's business partner was? I hate to tell you this. I really hate to tell you this. Bernie Kornfeld of IOS. You, you, I hear a lot of laughing. They know who Bernie, a lot of people know who Bernie Kornfeld is. But see, here's the thing about Bernie Kornfeld. Oh, he, yes, he's Jewish, yeah, he's Jewish. But, but, but Bernie Kornfeld, I'm sorry, what? Uh, well, you're getting closer. Bernie, Bernie Kornfeld. Yeah, they got him for stock fraud. Bernie Kornfeld, at this same time, was Tybor Rosenbaum's front man. Kornfeld's operation, IOS, was basically a subsidiary of, guess what? Permandex. And this is before Clay Shaw's name had ever been brought up. So Tiber Rosenbaum's man, Bernie Kornfeld, sent his business partner, John King, to see Jim Garrison. Well, the thing is, I'd heard about John King for years, but the day before the book was supposed to go to press, I just happened to be looking through an old newsletter, actually published by Willis Cardo, my boss, published back in the early 1970s. And he just happened, to, he didn't write it himself, but one of his reporters happened to mention the connection between John King and Bernie Kornfeld and Tiber Rosenbaum. So my point of telling you that story is that I only discovered that the day before the book went to press. So I had to change a page in the book and put it in there. But it's little details like that, that in, in, in seemingly the most insignificant places, keep pointing to an Israeli connection. Or maybe I should say the Israeli connection. Um, I've only, <laughs> I, I've talked for quite a while here and I, I've, I've really, I could go on and on. I, I've touched on, I've t I think probably if, n if none of you ever read my book, I think I probably laid a few things out here that will make you think, that give you a new perspective on the whole thing. Um, I'll be looking forward to any questions you might have. I will close with something which is totally unrelated, but I, I uh, took some pictures here in Washington the other day of something that I guess it is related. Uh, and, I, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to get this picture at large because I knew I was coming here to Joe's meeting. And uh, I thought, this is just, it looks like a placemat because I, I had it laminated. But this really says a lot about where the power and the influence is in Washington, D.C. It's Union Station. It's our beautiful train station in Washington. For the last week, they had a 50th anniversary celebration of the state of Israel. That's in Union Station of Washington, not Union Station in Tel Aviv. And you'll see here this picture of the facade of Union Station. You see the American flag hanging here, and you see the Israeli flag hanging here. Note they're both hung at the same level and uh, both the same size, and you're, it's really hard to tell whether you're in Washington or Tel Aviv. But I want you to all look at that picture very, very carefully because, as I say, pass it around if you would, it really says a lot about where the power is in this country today. That's what I'm up against. And that's why my book is so dangerous. Even if I'm wrong, and I don't think that I am, 
even if I'm wrong, they're afraid that a lot of people are going to believe that I'm right. And uh, they also know that I'm not going to back down. They also know that they can't shut me up. There's only several ways they can shut me up, and it would all involve uh, violence. I don't think that that's going to happen because, unfortunately, um, they don't always act as we expect them to. But nonetheless, uh, that's why I came out here because I'm going down there to that Board of Trustees meeting, and I am going to say a few words. If I have three minutes to speak, or if I have 30 minutes to speak, and I've already, they're already aware of the fact that there's a lot of people who do support me, or at least who believe that there is such a thing as freedom of speech in this country, who are going to be there, who've been notified. I told this reporter for the Los Angeles Times that I had mailed invitations to 5,000 people. And I want to tell you something. That's probably the first time I ever heard a reporter gulp through the phone. <laughs> because he thought I was just planning to come out there, you know, and waltz in and say, Hi, I'm Mike Piper. For some reason, the Los Angeles Times had not yet found out that I had sent this mailing out. So all of a sudden they realized that there are voters, people who vote in Orange County. I don't know if votes really count anymore, but, you know, a lot of people have that perception that they do. All of a sudden they realize that there are voters from Orange County who have families and family members who vote who are going to be there seeing what they do. And they've known before, Joe and some of the other guys are down there, but hearing that figure, 5,000, they don't think 5,000 people are going to show up. But, you know, politicians do kind of tread lightly when the voters speak. Sometimes it doesn't always seem that way. But all they've been hearing is from the ADL. Now they get to hear personally from me and hopefully from you and hopefully from all of us together. So if you can make it down there, I hope you will be down there. And, uh, and it's really, it's not for me. And it's not for my book. It is for the First Amendment. It is for freedom of speech. And it is for America. And that's what they really don't like. So uh, thank you for coming here tonight. Thanks to Joe and Dee. Thank you for your patience. I hope my uh, charts didn't confuse you. I hope they, they enlightened you. And uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions during our question and answer session. And I'm sorry I didn't get to show you all my other fun stuff. But, uh, Thank you.